Welcome everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We have something different here at Clear Gaming Extreme. I have with me Lionel from GameStream. He's here today to explain what GameStream is, how it affects the cloud gaming market, and uh, what we can look forward to in the future, hopefully. Lionel, thank you so much for joining us. I imagine you're a very busy man, so we really appreciate taking the time out today. Hi, oh, it's good. Hi, everyone. And th yeah. thank you for the time. No, th thank you. So, as we said previously there, I think that the best place to start is uh, finding out exactly what GameStream is. Sure. Um, so GameStream is uh, the leading B2B cloud gaming company. Uh, we are delivering end-to-end um, uh, -end service to many different partners. Uh, we are operating in the telecommunication industry, in the game publisher industry, and in the, in the hospitality industry, basically. So we provide a full set of services, uh, which means uh, we provide the content, we provide the technology, we provide software and hardware, and we operate, maintain, and support all our services. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. So as I said as, as well, not a lot of people will have heard of GameStream because you guys do all your work in the background. You, you know, you aren't at the, at the forefront. Yeah. Um, but, you know, services like Stadia, GeForce Now, etc., um, you guys have a lot of data. You've done a lot of yeah, research. Yeah, you're completely right. I mean, um, we, we are deployed today. Um, nobody knows GameStream, more or less. We, we are uh, hidden behind uh, the game, uh, the brand of our, of our, of our partners. Uh, today, we are operating in uh, six uh, different countries. Uh, we are present in Indonesia. Uh, under the brand GameCo, that's operated uh, fully by PT Telecom, the leading telco in Indonesia. Uh, we are present in, in Dubai and all the Emirates in the UAE. Uh, we are providing the solution to Etisalat, uh, one of the biggest uh, Middle East provider of uh, service uh, telecommunication services. And here they are using uh, two different brands. One is uh, Arena and one is, uh, is um, Elife IPTV. Uh, and uh, this is under Elife IPTV, we are providing Elife gaming service. Uh, we are also present in uh, Switzerland with the Sunrise Game Cloud solution. Uh, we are also present in Taiwan with Changhua Telecom under the brand uh, Ami Cloud Gaming. Uh, and also in Slovenia and in France. Uh, in France, this is uh, Playo, uh, and in Slovenia, we are under the same IPTV brand of uh, Telecom Slovenia. So in fact, we are indeed present with many different partners. Uh, we are going to announce a new partnership very soon in the Middle East. Uh, but uh, as you said, we, we are not at the forefront. We are creating value for our partners, uh, and this is really our key um, and core business, it's how to create uh, gaming services for our partners so we can help them to create value on top of their network, being fixed mobile. Uh, we are present on uh, IPTV, on, 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 on mobile. We are present on set-top box, smart TVs, PCs, Mac, iOS, and all those kind of different uh, services. Yeah, I mean, that, that all sounds fantastic because we get loads of questions all the time about services. Uh, you know, in the Middle East uh, and India uh, as well, and it, it's hard for us to sort of let people know. We we are based in the UK and USA, mm -hmm. so all we know is Stadia, GeForce Now, Shadow PC, you know, Amazon, Amazon Luna, the, the ones that we have access to. But but you guys have done a lot of research in that department as well, it seems, and you sort of have some information about how these types of services are going to be able to, you know, consolidate players and get them to switch over to cloud gaming and away from the, the traditional hardware. Yeah, the, the, there is a, a huge boom when it comes to cloud gaming right now. And, and indeed, we see a transition from the traditional gaming that was uh, mainly driven by a segmentation between different devices and devices were driving the content. Uh, and, and today, cloud gaming, thanks to a completely agnostic uh, and, and, and it's an approach that is um, content centric. Uh, it means that you can access one single content to any different platforms i mean and you can use uh, the platform of your choice you can use your preferred device you can use your smartphones if it's your smartphone or your tablet if it's your tablet 
that's your preferred device and you, you will get access completely agnostically across all the devices and all the networks which means that we help uh, to transition from the traditional model you, where you have to install uh, games to a model where you will consume a service uh, through a library of content and then you can access all uh, your library uh, only in a single click so uh, this is really kind of the same way netflix has transformed the the, the market we see that there is this transition because uh, we are bringing the concept and the, the ease of use uh, it's basically yeah. what we are selling it's not technology it's not only content it's also the fact that as an end user i can start by only clicking on the content and it instantly starts to play on my device so you don't have any you don't have any more to to bother about the content installation about the device the compatibility uh, the updates the upgrades and all the stuff everything is in the cloud and it's streamed directly in terms of video stream uh, it's streamed directly to your device so that's where we are switching uh, helping to switch i mean the, the 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 end users to this kind of consumption which is completely different this is happening right now so it will it will not happen overnight uh, that's something that will take a few years just like uh, in the in the music industry and the video industry but it's starting now and i think uh, right now we see that there is the core gamers segment which is the one that we're addressing as as, uh, as game stream with our solutions uh, this is core gamers plus uh, casual kids and all those family content that we can provide but by the time uh, there will be a complete transition of the whole industry, including the more hardcore gamers and even esports. That in the end, I, I think they will also go to cloud gaming because streaming is the future, and streaming can help also to improve the experience for all the, the users at the end. No, you're absolutely correct. The the one thing that always gets me as the you know it, it is right to compare it you know to Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, etc. Uh, that transition took some time, but there's obviously it's much more difficult to stream a game than it is to stream a movie. When you're streaming movies and TVs, you know, you have, you can set the buffer. So you're always going to mm, get yeah. 4K stream uh, content that way. But when it comes to streaming games, even in 1080, you know, it's much more difficult. What? How do you guys work in that way um, to provide the best you know the best and sort of smoothest operation you know i'm not looking for your secrets <laughs> but no. do you guys do you guys do anything you know anything that you can share with the viewers and myself as well because i'm here just to learn as much um that helps you guys to provide you know the best possible experience and that way you know anything that's that's different that you'd be like to share mm -hmm. sure um and, and you're completely right i mean the 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 challenges are a kind of uh, a level higher than just streaming video because of the, the fact, as you said, that you cannot use buffering, you cannot use the standard CDNs processes that are in place for video distribution. You are in a peer-to-peer -peer model. Uh, so there has to be, um, I would say, this put, this put a little bit the bar higher in terms of network. And that's why it makes sense uh, as a B2B company to partner with telecommunication service providers because in the end, they are the one controlling the pipe. They are the one controlling the, the network. So they can really deliver value on top because they master their network and they master the quality mm -hmm. of service that they can put on the network. And this is how as a, uh, an end user, you will get the best user experience. Best user experience means the lowest latency. So that's part of our, our control of the complete hardware and software stack in the cloud, which means that we can really reduce the latency. And as an end user, I can tell you that you will not notice that you are in the cloud with our solution. That, that's that's our, what makes it beautiful. It's because you don't feel it's in the cloud and technology becomes interesting when, when it's transparent. I mean, uh, so that, that's where we are today. And, and that's the same uh, in terms of bandwidth. Uh, we have to optimize the, the, the bandwidth at its maximum so we can deliver the best user experience in terms of resolution, uh, visual quality, perceived quality uh, for the minimum bandwidth. And that's where we are very strong. Uh, because with H.265, for example, with three megabits per second, you can deliver a stream that is of, of high quality and that will be uh, just like even an HD solution. So that's where we are very strong. If you compare our solution to any different solution in the, in the in, I mean, even the big names uh, that are here, you will see that we are very efficient. And uh, this is uh, from a 
I would say the, the customer experience standpoint, what makes the value of our solution. Then um, you can hear a lot of people saying we can do cloud gaming. The reality is that if you want to crack the cloud gaming market, there is a challenge in the cloud because you want to, you need to do that at scale. And that's where also it's because very interesting. It becomes very interesting because our solution, we have our own isolation technology in the cloud. So we can play multiple games per GPU, per server, per racks. So we can optimize the density. And that's the key if you want to be successful is to have density in the cloud so you can serve the maximum uh, number of players with the minimum number of hardware so to optimize your return on investment and that's that's also where it become interesting with our solution because we are in full control of the complete stack being uh, being on on our hardware on our software and also working with cloud vendors like uh, like the, the big names uh, from uh, from uh, microsoft gcp uh, or aws for example no, that's that's fantastic. Um, you mentioned hardware there, so having experience just about every cloud gaming service that I can right now, um, Nvidia GeForce Now is is hands down probably the best uh, I've experienced personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in terms of hardware, you know Nvidia have you know the GPU masters, they've, they've built these super pods. Um, what sort of hardware do you guys use? Are you, are you allowed to sort of tell us? Do you guys have a, you know, a mix Intel, AMD, NVIDIA sort of thing, or do you have like a specific partnership with, with, with one? It, it really depends on the situation. I mean, this is really case by case uh, okay. consideration we need to have because uh, if you're going to stream for a mobile, pure mobile ecosystem in a in a very network constrained environment, like what we are doing, for example, in in Indonesia, uh, as you can guess, the network is not exactly at the same level as in, in Western Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to optimize everything, and there we can use a certain type of hardware. And if we are, for example, in in Switzerland, where we are today deployed with Sunrise, and we have we even deployed a 4K over 5G solution. So you, we can go as high as 4K uh, with our solution. It's a little bit marketing because the reality is that there is not so much devices in the field that can support 4K, especially in terms of screens. I mean, the smartphones they are not really 4K. A lot of TVs are not really 4Ks. So, but but still, we have a proven deployment in 4K, and you will not get use the same hardware and, and, and that's right. where also it's interesting to work with with our solution because in the end it means that we can adapt we are completely agnostic we have deployment with with uh, intel amd uh, also nvidia obviously um and then cpu gpu from amd or intel uh, we can mix all those ecosystems mm -hmm. because we are in full control of the complete stack yeah. then what we do most of the time is that we are designing some kind of reference design hardware for the cloud with some partners that we have and then uh, depending on the situation we will use this or that hardware or we can even mix i mean uh, if we start for example deployment on on the fixed uh, just like what we did in, in indonesia and then we expand over mobile we will add different kind of servers that will be used for different use cases and that, that's what is interesting we are not tied to a specific vendor uh, we can really uh, uh, we, what we want is to bring the best solution for our customer, which is the, te the telecommunication service provider or the game publisher. And then uh, we can evolve also as the evolution of the industry is moving uh, very quickly. We need to adapt to that. So maybe what we have today is not exactly what we, what we will bring tomorrow on the market. Mm -hmm. And the point is that we have the software that can fit to that. That sounds fantastic. Really in full control there as well. And it sort of leads into my next question quite nicely. Uh, you know, Yesterday isn't the same as today, and it won't be the same as tomorrow. So I was sort of wondering, um, you guys, obviously, as I said before, do a lot of research. Um, and, you know, Project Endgame is something new that we're going to hear about very soon. But mm -hmm. Project Endgame, Nvidia GeForce Now, Xbox Cloud Gaming, what does it mean for the future of Cloud Gaming? You know, where, where do you guys see it going with, with your data and your research? So... I think all those those um, those services uh, that we, we we see. I mean, the, the GeForce is pretty new. Project in game even 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 newer. Uh, Xbox is pushing now the cloud. They have not been pushing so much in the past. Uh, I think this, this is showing that 
cloud gaming has a bright future. Uh, this is this is just the beginning. Uh, there has been cloud gaming for uh, many years. I mean, more than 10, 10 to, to 12 years. Uh, early 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 startups started very very in the around 2010. So. so close to that. So it's not completely new. Uh, what has evolved is the network, uh, the quality of the network and uh, the hyper broadband connectivities uh, being 5G or uh, DOCS is 3.1 fiber, all those ecosystems makes that the, the, the quality of the network is at a level that that was not there. And I think that was the missing point before. Plus, um, there are many different use cases around GPUs right now, which makes that in the end, the, the, the GPU market has evolved from, from I would say a gamer market where it was at the beginning, like 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 15 to 12 years ago, it was pure gamer approach. Right now, we see a lot of people coming to GPUs because of VR, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, inference, all those kind of of um, use cases have put a lot more pressure in terms of uh, pushing the boundaries of the GPUs and which makes that in the end there is a decline in price of the GPUs uh, and then it becomes affordable as an industry to invest into those GPUs because you can multiply uh, the use cases uh, so when you set up a platform today you can deliver cloud gaming but not only you can do a lot more with the same GPUs and obviously Cloud gaming is something that is really dependent on when people are playing. So some, sometimes people will, will not play games because they are at work and, and not everyone is playing at the same time. So it means that there is some capacity and that's where it becomes interesting to put that in the cloud because then you can mutualize the capacity between the players because not all the players are playing at the same time, but also between the use cases which in the end is the way to bring the cost down and to optimize the return on investment of an infrastructure and i think that's why we see people like intel coming into the the the, the, the cloud uh, uh, we're not so sure it's a cloud gaming i mean but the cloud the gpu cloud that can be used in different ways from the industry to the entertainment and and th that's why we see a lot of rooms for those players and and also nvidia obviously they are they are gpu provider they are gpu vendors so they are a lot more interested into investing into those kind of cloud solution because then they can deliver to many different industries so i think that's that's why we see that but for the cloud gaming itself it's huge it's huge because it means that there is capacity to deliver to the end user so we have the capacity mm -hmm. we have the network my, my my belief is that we need also to to see still see some some evolution in the in the content industry to adopt this uh, model of distribution because that's that's not the natural one for many years people have been deploying distributing content with cds then download uh, with the keys uh, so it's a it's a different model which is more like in line with the old model of the video industry uh, but we see that it's going very fast and i think that's why it will take like less than, than five to seven years to, to move the complete in industry to the game to the cloud gaming yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Uh, it's inevitable it's going to go there. Um, it seems to be the natural order of things, uh, the way mm. everyone taking advantage of the cloud in some way or another to, you know, help their business. Um, you briefly mentioned Intel there for a minute. And of course, the recent news of Project Endgame was very exciting. It was very confusing as well because we don't know very much about it just yet. We, we, we don't know what this service is going to resemble. You know, we don't know if it's going to be a cloud computing solution, you know, for, for sort of businesses and creators or whether we'll be able to use it for, for cloud gaming as well. Um, I had a nosy online, found mm -hmm. some pa some patents that, that Intel have submitted. Mm -hmm. And although it's very similar to the same setup as a shadow or a GeForce now, for, for instance, but that doesn't mean to say that it's definitely going to be a cloud uh, solution. Um, so, I mean, my question is, you guys will know better than us, um, you know, and and how Intel's entry into this could affect the market because they they've already had experience with uh, Tencent uh, in China. They provided mm -hmm. a, a solution over there. It was Android based though, mm -hmm. so you know the games aren't as demanding as say a cyberpunk or a dying light 2 you know sure. just sort of recent games that i've been playing um how do you guys see them entering into the market and and do you do you sort of see what the final product would resemble uh or at least at launch what it what, what it may resemble and also how it's going to affect 
the space as well because they're about to flood the market with, with GPUs and fingers crossed those prices come down. Um, so yeah, yeah. So yeah. what do you guys see happening here? Well, as I said, I think one of the the, the main aspects is to you know the, the, the Intel coming into the GPUs has been a long story. <laughs> So uh, ultimately, it will it, it will be it will it will happen now, and and I think that they, they have the capacity. We know they have the capacity as a company to deliver at scale, and that's mm -hmm. probably the the best uh, the best uh, where they are the best. And so the fact that they enter into the GPU market is definitely something that can move the needle, um, or more than the needle, that can move the market itself uh, because of the prices, because of the competition. Having competition is always better than, than having one single vendor um, taking all the market share because it means that then uh, you can improve the quality, you can improve the cost, you can improve also the size of the business as well. So that, that's where I believe all in all it will be, it will be interesting to see in the next uh, in the next uh, month or two one two years to see how the market is reacting to that it will all depends on on the the starting point in terms of quality and capacity what they can provide so i think they are, they are starting step by step to build uh, something that that is a, a meaningful solution for the industry as you said there has been some uh, first uh solution in the market with android gaming which is less demanding in terms of uh, gpu this less less gpu incentive solution but still very interesting for two different for different reasons because uh be because it's a different market and 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 with android games you can address uh, a market that is um, complementary to the pc uh, market i think uh, from a geography from a, from a, from the kind of, of of countries that you will address uh, we see a lot of places like uh, in, in 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 asia in africa where people even if they have big smartphones they cannot play the latest games so it means that in those kind of countries it will make sense it will be very meaningful to have uh, android gaming and there is also more advanced market mature market where it's interesting because i, I think you, you know that uh, scott i guess uh, the, the 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 mobile uh, cloud gaming solution has, is still probably the 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 thing that people need to crack because it's it's not that easy to have a, a mobile experience that is uh, uh, at the level of of of, um, of uh, on device uh, play when it comes to, to, to streaming and that's where uh, streaming Android games uh, is definitely interesting because these are games that are nat natively designed for the mobile ecosystem which means that if you can address a premium ecosystem with premium content from the Android world uh, to stream those content to to uh, to, uh, to uh, a touch screen, I mean basically smartphones or a tablet, you can then kind of uh, crack uh, the market uh, with those kind of streaming solutions. Because having a PC games is interesting because it's a premium solution, and and being able to play on your own device makes sense, but it's more an in-home solution because the smartphone or the, or the tablet is becoming your primary device as an end user. Uh, it's something that you can do. But when you are in the real mobility world, you, you, you are, it's probably unlikely that you will, you will have a gamepad with you. Uh, so uh, touch games, native touch games are the most interesting ones to, to stream. And that's where it's, it's really interesting to have a dedicated solution for those kind of games because you can then optimize the density once again i come back to the density because if, if you want to 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 be winning if you want to win this market you have to have the density a lot of people can stream but a lot, not so many people can stream at, with the density and and that's where it's interesting i said that for for in game itself i think it's, it's it depends we'll see what will be the future i mean i, I believe it comes from the the consumer part of intel and there are many different divisions so it's it's not completely clear if it's a solution that will be dedicated to cloud gaming or something that can be a shadow like solution or something that will try also to to leverage the unique position of intel in the the PT, the desktop PC itself, because uh, Intel has a pretty different uh, position compared to NVIDIA in the industry. They are very strong on, on the desktop solutions. And I think yeah. that's something they want to also to protect. So maybe there is also some kind of age or uh, uh, offload uh, solution between the cloud and what you can do on, on the desktop that, that can be in the pipe. 
No, you explained that that really well there. And I mean, each cloud gaming solution right now, um, none will fit everyone's need. We see it. Um, you mentioned mobile. I'm not a big mobile gamer myself, but Google Stadia is probably the most stable here in Scotland for me anyway. Every, everyone mm-hmm. differs, of course. Um, running on mobile data is probably the most stable. Um, but GeForce now sort of offers a PC experience on mobile. Mm-hmm. It's definitely nowhere near as streamlined as well. And then you have uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming that offers a ton of games with interactive uh, and custom touch controls as well. So what we what we see uh, is a sort of if someone could bring all of that together into one service, it, it's not going to you know run away with the cloud gaming market. But it would be it would be really nice. So. You know, we see we, everyone has a, their pros and cons, their advantages and their disadvantages. And, you know, again, it just sort of leads into what the future might look like. And, and that leads into my next question as well. Uh, you know, what do you think will be the, you know, the next big boom, I feel like, you know, uh, there it is on screen in terms of market developments and, and what these services and professionals will offer to us sort of thing? That we have we have started by working with the the service provider because you need the support mm-hmm. of the network. Uh, in 2021, we have expanded our solution with the the, the game publishers ecosystem. And I think that's also probably yeah. a key to the professional what you what you are. You are referring to questions uh, we have started like you know last year we did uh, in the end of 2021 the, the first. Um, demo streaming uh, for focus home uh, with Plectel. and we have also made a partnership with ubisoft as you mentioned uh, it's pretty different because we, there we are providing a, a technology bricks to to enhance the the sharp experience uh, but um well you know i think there is a lot to do with the game publishers because uh they are they have the content uh, content is king in this industry and and they have to reconnect to the audience um, i mean uh, steam is a, is a great it's a huge platform it's it has, it has helped a lot of publishers to develop their content but right now i think there is a, a very strong interest from all the publishers to reconnect with their audience so they can build on top of the community uh, and try to leverage their content at its maximum and that's where we see uh, a lot of, of different services that that can be interesting for them either for themselves internally as professional services like delivering QA delivering uh, press uh, demos those kind of, of, uh, of, of specific events or uh, um, specific usage uh, for their own usage uh, use case for their own usage um, but also yeah to try to reconnect them with a direct to consumer approach because it becomes more and more uh, interesting for them uh, from uh, from 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 um, I would say, um, operational standpoint commercial standpoint uh, they can build something as because of what we just said in terms of uh, the industry moving the GPUs are affordable the network mm-hmm. is there so it means that you can you can really benefit all this and try to build uh, this relation with your end user and that's where I see the future is going um, it's still interesting because not all the markets can be addressed directly to consumer because you still need the network. And in some many places in the world, uh, like like uh, in India, for example, in China, you need to have some support from the telcos to, to, if you want to get the best user experience. But there are many places where they can go direct to consumer. And, and, and there is also a big trend in the industry. And I think all what we hear about metaverse and all these new kind of, of contents, to me, is, 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 is an evolution of what the cloud gaming is providing and what the gaming has been providing for years in terms of content. I mean, the virtual world and virtual ecosystems have been there. And, and Fortnite, for example, there are already a kind of metaverse with people doing concerts yeah. inside <laughs> this world. Mm-hmm. So it's already there. There. It's just that it's the only it's the the first use cases. It's the beginning, and I think uh, just like yeah, the internet uh, at the edge of the 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 nineties, people didn't think of Snapchat uh, of, of the new yeah. use cases. So. so we don't see we don't see already the new use cases. But I think the the fact that it's all, all those bricks are there to build a very interesting future where we will be more immersed 
maybe not completely with the headset all the time and things like that. But but uh, probably there will there will be very interesting things to build a new kind of experience uh, for the web, uh, and that's where I see uh, the industry going. And the streaming is part of that because yeah. if you have a complete uh, 3D world generated in the cloud, you cannot expect to download this. At the end, yeah. so streaming will make sense because it will be the only way to distribute those kind of content because it will be like too 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 big to to be uh, downloaded as a kind of map. Uh, it's not the same way. It's it's the world itself that is streamed, and I feel like this is where we are going. Probably in ten years from now, we will see the first real use case once the the ecosystem has shaped. I mean, all this stuff about the NFTs uh, uh, is interesting, but it's more a security for me. It's more a kind of a security key. The way it's used today, mm -hmm. it might not be the right way, and, and and maybe a lot of people are doing uh, the the early steps, the baby steps of of, of the, the, the this technology. But it shows what we can do, and then we will find the real use cases that would generate value for everybody, and that that's where we will go in the end. But it, it's going to take time, but we have everything right now. I, uh, I like and I don't like that you mentioned metaverse there. Uh, I'm so I'm sick of hearing it uh, in the terms of no one you know not not this the same person sorry two separate people don't have the same definition uh, of what the metaverse will yeah. look like and it's exciting but it's also as someone that likes to know exactly what's going to happen and, and something that comes down the middle um i don't like that i don't know what it's going to resemble um I think VR, VR that, maybe. That's why it's interesting. I mean, that's yeah, why it's yeah. interesting. If everybody, if if we would knew exactly what it is, I mean, probably it would not be as interesting because you you, you cannot imagine everything. So, and no. this gives also some some. I mean, some some ways for the future generation to invent on top of what we've built. So that's why it's interesting. I mean, look what we are doing right now. This kind of interview. Like 20 years ago, it would be like, oh, I don't know, it would, it's not possible. You have to be in a, in a real TV studio and, and, and this kind of stuff here. We're, I mean, I'm in France. Where are you? I don't know. I'm in Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, look, that, that's that's completely different. And why not in the future having this kind of uh, yeah 3D ecosystem in the metaverse and doing these same interviews and generate value for you, for me and for everybody in, in the global ecosystem? I mean, that's, that's probably where we're going to go. Yeah, I mean, I think my definition of what the metaverse would look like, and you know, you mentioned Fortnite there, uh, and you know, they have mm. sort of concerts and whatnot. Um, but then the, the other week there, um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers was playing a gig, and you could watch it on your Oculus Quest. Mm. I sort of see it as that mashing together, you know, so a VR chat meets a meets a Fortnite sort of thing, and I think. And, and and I imagine you probably do as well. That the cloud is going to have a lot, a lot to do with this. We've already tested VR streaming over the mm -hmm. cloud. It is possible. Shadow is probably Shadow and Put Sphere are the two sort of leading contenders there uh, right now. Is VR something that you guys have or are possibly going to work on in the future? So in the in the background, is that something you know yet or? Yeah, do, do we know that? Yes, do we have it? I mean, in R&D, yes. Um, do we believe it's uh, a commercial service now? No, we don't. And that's why we are focused on cloud gaming, because I think the content is still the key. And we are, there is a lack of content in, this, uh, in, this, in the VR ecosystem. Plus, the difficulty, I believe, is the experience right now. You need helmets, they are very expensive, it's difficult, you need space. Um, I, I'm not so sure this will be exactly what will be the, the, the future of the games because it's it's tricky. It, it remains tricky right now to have a, an interesting experience. Expensive, tricky. Uh, so we have the technology to do it, yes. Uh, are there constraints? Of course, and they are, they are even higher than what we are doing for cloud because the latency need to be even lower if you don't uh, want to get yeah. motion sickness, for example, which is one, one of the biggest problems. Um, the latency between your move and uh, 
uh, what you see uh, and then it means that it's it's not only to be in 5g but maybe in 6g because you have to have a very 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 low latency and to be that under a very control uh, i would say to control um, parameters um, I mean, we are not talking about 10 milliseconds, but more like one or two milliseconds. So it's going even lower uh, in terms of, of what you need. But um, I think uh, this is interesting because this is part of uh, what we will need in the future. Uh, maybe not exactly as we are doing it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, before I, I jumped in game stream, I've been working also for, for Technicolor for, for 15 years and I've been experiencing uh, early VR experience uh, because we were designing some VR, VR, VR experiences. And, and this is really interesting because there is also a lot of work done in the way you can deliver a story. Storytelling using VR yeah. will be different and then it becomes much, 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 much more like like a theater than a movie you have you have to think the scene the scene more than uh, something that is flat so it's yeah. it's a it's a different way to tell a story and we we will probably see different ways to uh, deliver the gaming experience as well and that's why i think that all the industry is moving also because there will be cloud native vr native and and and, and, and stream native content so it's not today we are more trying to bring what we have and deliver it in a different way. And I think we will see also new ways to build the experience and the content to deliver it in a more friendly uh, way, completely adapted to the technology. And then it will, as I said in the beginning, it will become transparent. It's not going to be the wow effect because it's VR. It's going to be natural because it makes sense, because there is uh, there is mean in what you are trying to tell as a storytelling solution, as a, as a storytelling um, to give uh, life to a, a story. So that that's where I think it's it's still challenging to to understand exactly what we can do. The technology is the first point. Then you have the wow, and then it becomes natural. We are not there yet. No, we, we definitely aren't. No. Um, listen, we we touched on your game demo you did for a Plague Tale Innocence. Now, I had mm -hmm. a go. I had a go there when we first got in contact. Didn't know it was a thing. So I didn't at first. Um, mainly because I played Tale Innocence had been, it was on xCloud, so I tried it over there. I, you know, as we do here, we test a lot of games. I've had a go on the local PC as well. Now, mm -hmm. my experience with, uh, I, I keep saying xCloud, Xbox Cloud Gaming, it is now. Um, my experience with Xbox Cloud isn't the greatest where I am. It's by far, you know, it's at the bottom of my list in terms of experiences. So I wasn't sure what to expect when I tried out the demo. Mm -hmm. And it is as simple as you open up the browser page, you hit play demo, it cues you for a few minutes and then you're in and you're playing a Plague Tale Innocence. Now, the first thing I thought was this looks so much cleaner and the latency was so much better than, than uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming. And I was just, I was sort of taken back by how good it was. And I was just wondering, do you guys have plans or do you see publishers using this type of technology, you know, with you guys in the background going forward to get their games out to people? Uh, you know, we're gone to the days of having demo discs inside magazines. It's, it mm -hmm. makes sense to do this thing in the cloud right now. If you can as well, do you guys have any plans for anything else like that going forward? And also, is this a way that, that game publishers should take advantage and get their games out to to more people sure sure i, I yeah this this uh this first uh this first demo has uh has brought a lot of attention to what we are doing and and i think uh open up many doors um open eyes and doors not only not only doors but also eyes of some people as i told uh i think the 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 game publisher industry and and they still still need to evolve and to understand what's the value that we can bring and bringing this capability as as it was as you said you start uh, you click in your browser so it's a full browser experience you don't need to install anything and then you can start to play just like in in few few seconds it starts 
so then that, that that's what we can bring and this open up a lot of opportunities uh, for demos uh, for new release of games uh, for experience for events and stuff like that and and we have many plans with many different publishers um, we're gonna have very soon some some new new experience that we will deliver to the market and that's um, I mean probably around you know, within, within a month or two you will see something uh, on, on coming um we have we have opened a lot of opportunities with this and that's interesting because that's the first step for us also the the the, the fact that we can bring this value to the to the game uh, publisher ecosystem and the game publisher industry is also interesting because it's fueling also our, our telecommunication service provider services uh because then we can we can we can i would say uh, bring value to each ecosystem I mean, one ecosystem is fueling in terms of content. The other ecosystem can bring a direct, uh, direct audience uh, because they have they have already an existing market. So it's interesting because then, uh, as as an intermediary solution, as as a technology partner of of both ecosystem, we can help each other to build something that is a win-win-win solution with uh, with with three partners. But we uh, we we're probably going to be at the, the London Game Festival very soon uh, to demonstrate this new capability with with new partners. Uh, so that's uh, that's interesting, and we hope to have uh, some more uh, demos coming uh, over the course of the year. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, as I said, we, we, we want to help the publisher to reconnect to their audience. So it means to deliver a, a kind of direct to consumer uh, service. Uh, but that's something that needs some steps before you can do that. Uh, we are also always trying to improve. Uh, we have probably the best latency and one of the uh, best quality, perceived quality based on, on, on the low bandwidth. But we can always try to improve and we are always making new research, uh, trying to use AI, trying to use different kind of process to improve the quality here and there and reduce the bandwidth. Uh, because then it means it's interesting also because if, uh, if you have the, the lowest bandwidth, you can you can you can get the best reach of the market. That's always yeah. interesting because you can have very good quality with very big pipe and very big streams, which is interesting, but you are missing a big crunch of the market. And then if you can reduce that bandwidth, that you need then you can reach a lot more people and that's where we we, we are trying to go yeah no absolutely and, and i believe i believe you know most companies are, are trying to do that as well because that is a big issue for cloud gaming it is a stumbling block right now as the infrastructure uh, of internet I, I, and i was amazed when i first came into this that there is still caps and services like in America. You have you have data caps uh, for your monthly your monthly broadband and and being in the UK, that's not something really that we have to deal with. So, mm. you know the way you guys are going uh, and other companies are doing it as well. You know the lowest bandwidth being st the most players, but getting into other countries it, it is proving very difficult for some of the the bigger companies. I like that you guys are going out there and working directly with the telecommunications to get your service or to get a service, you know, uh, off the back of you guys work into places like Indonesia and India, because we, we get so many calls. How do I play this from India? You know, can I use a VPN, etc. And it all just complicates the process. So it does, um, which, and then, and then it becomes difficult to recommend, uh, really excited to see what you guys come up with and you know recently there we've seen that you guys teamed up with ubisoft now if i may i was very surprised by this because we've seen ubisoft have a very good partnership with google stadia and amazon luna they have a channel on luna ubisoft, uh, ubisoft plus and the same on stadia as well they put a lot of support into these two platforms um so we've we seen that you guys teamed up as a business to business solution, we were very surprised because we would have thought they would have went with Google or AWS's business to business solution, being that they already had, you know, the inner workings mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. um, great for you guys. Ubisoft's a massive publisher. Um, I was just wondering how that partnership came about and, and you know, can you let us know sort of what the end product uh, may resemble? <laughs> it's yeah it's 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 fine it's difficult to tell everything but I, I mean we are once again we are a b2b company we are a technology provider mm -hmm. uh, we are probably and we have proven deployment and 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 probably one of the best experience that comes from our 
uh, mastering, as I said, of the software and the hardware. And uh, that, that's where we can bring uh, some part of our technologies to, to those kind of partners. It doesn't mean that we are delivering the, the same end-to-end -end solution as we are doing for some of our telcos. Uh, but still, as I said, we, have a, we, have a, we are pro providing a technology bricks that is used to, to enhance their shareable experience. So that's a very specific use case to start with. And, and I hope to be uh, uh, to be more in that there will be more in the future. But right now it's, it's very specific because we have this technology in place already there and we can find some fit as a, as a, as a technology partner there. And just also, you know, uh, it's interesting because you said there is those channels existing for the distribution. But mm -hmm. if you look at the, the, the play for the content, and it will be interesting to see uh, what Microsoft will do with uh, with Activision Blizzard, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just acquired. But I think the, the, the fact uh, that you have the content doesn't mean that you need to distribute it exclusively to, exclusively to your platform. Otherwise, you're not innovative. The, the, the way you can deliver innovation on top of that is to bring special features, special experience related to that, that content that you control. But the value of the content is to be multi-platform, is to be on as many platforms as possible because in the end, as an end user, today you don't want to be tied to a specific ecosystem. The cloud gaming, as I, as I was saying in the beginning, is trying to uh, to bring something that is completely agnostic. You can use uh, your own device to play the content. I can use mine, and you will, will have uh, the same experience with the same content, but on different devices. It's not to recreate that dependency. I think what 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 is interesting is if you are trying to bring value on top of this content then you will attract more users on your platform. But it doesn't mean that you would need to be exclusive. And I, I hope, I hope that's going to be how people can differentiate in the future. So we will, that's how we can also, uh, the same, there is competition in the GPU. That's how you can bring competition in the experience by trying to optimize the experience with new features uh, and with new kind of experience. I think Stadia was trying to do that. Uh, maybe it was not successful or I don't know, but uh, they tried to bring something different, trying to merge with broadcasting and trying to bring something new uh, to the gaming ecosystem and I hope that's gonna be what we what, what, that's gonna be the, the same way for for Microsoft with Activision Blizzard because a lot of people fear that they will they will be exclusive with their content on their platform uh, and then probably, to my opinion it's just a way to drive piracy uh, if you want to drive audience to your platform it's because you are innovative yeah I think Microsoft have actually been one of the and Xbox have been one of the best companies recently uh, in terms of accessibility. Um, th th these companies are always going to lock certain games to the platform, you know, where the, the, the first the first party. But what Microsoft are doing, and, and hopefully everyone else follows, as you say, they are making it available across as many devices as possible. They mm -hmm. still have a lot of work to do. They, they, you know, their cloud streaming is by far and away. It's, it isn't touching, um, you know, the, the experience you get with a GeForce now, or even Stadia to, to a certain extent. And Amazon Luna, which, are, which I'm hearing is, is really good. Um, getting it out in, in as many hands as possible is always, I think, is always going to be the number one priority now going forward. And uh, it's, it's really exciting. You guys work away, you know, in the background. Uh, and you're doing a lot to build up the tech and then we don't know that we are seeing and experiencing this at the forefront it just has a different name on it um i mean this and in, this interview today has been great it's been very eye-opening is there anything else like really like to share before we before we wrap it up today well, uh, I think we've, we've covered many, many different yeah. topics. Thanks to your your question and, and your, I think your your very uh, acute uh, vision on, on the cloud gaming because you, you seem to be very aware of all the topics. Um, I hope that we will uh, we will um, we will be able to show more. Uh, we have a lot more to, to demonstrate. Um, it's just that we we also need to you know we are still uh, we still a growing company, so we still need to, to develop ourselves. We have uh, a lot in the pipe in terms of 
trying to improve the experience, uh, put more social, uh, because uh, gaming is uh, has been for many years uh, kind of a single uh, experience. We we want it to be a, a social experience uh, to to bring uh, a community to life, and that's really the motto that we are uh, we are uh, we are having right now. It's to how to to make something more, bring more, as I said, to be innovative. Uh, how to use deep link in the games? How to to to, to merge broadcast and gaming experience? How to try to to innovate with um, uh, hyper aggregation uh, solution so you can merge video, music, and gaming content around a single IP? All those kind of concepts we are trying to bring to life with our platform. And and thanks to the team we have uh, in GameStream, uh, we are we are uh, we are. Uh, I mean, we are able to, to deliver on the market and, and we hope. Uh, I know you, you will see more in, in the coming months uh, with new partners, new telco, new demos coming in the pipe. Uh, and I hope we will announce also uh, uh, even more news uh, in the coming months. That all sounds fantastic. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to see what you guys, what you guys bring. Um, Listen, everyone, I will put loads of links uh, in the video description about everything that we spoke about today uh, so you guys can have a look yourself. Lionel, I really appreciate your time today. I think I've took enough of it and it's getting towards tea time for me as, as well. So thank you very much uh, for your time. Really appreciate it and we really look forward to seeing what, what you guys bring in the future. All right, thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching. Stay safe.